What's happening everyone? So today I thought I would do a video about how I do my scenery. So pretty much what I've done here then also what I've done on the standard gauge is what I'm about to show you. Um, it's not overly complicated. You're just going to need a few supplies. So this is the area that I was going to scenic. So I was going to start right down over here and then just work my way all the way down to about that white building. The way I found to do it is it's best not to ballast, so do that afterward, um, and then it, it works out pretty good. So this is the material that I use to do the scenery. Uh, it may seem like a lot, and it is, and there's actually a, uh, quite a bit more I have in a drawer. Um, but to make the scenery, with a, you don't want it all one uniform color because um, in nature that's not how it really is. So what you're looking for is to get a bunch of different colors, um, not really far off from each other, but close. And then you'll see as I do the uh, scenery, you just kind of all mix them together. I use the pretty much all the stuff from Arizona Rock and Mineral. mineral. Um, what I found best is to, you get these food containers, as you can see, like your salsas or whatever. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and cut off the label and stick it on here. And you can see the different colors. And they're very similar to each other, but uh, it works out well as far as when you start to blend them together. So what I use for my glue is Mod Podge. It's a matte medium. You don't really want to use a wood glue because they have like a yellow tinge and they, a lot of times they don't uh, dry clear. So this I just mixed with water um, and then I actually have a large uh, nut from like a nut and bolt that's in the bottom. So when you shake it, it agitates. You can hear it going around in there and it helps get the uh, the glue that gets stuck at the bottom. The other thing you're going to need is a sprayer. These work pretty good. Got it from Home Depot. They're only a couple bucks. Um, so this is about 50-50 water and uh, rubbing alcohol. It can be 70%, 90%, it doesn't matter. So what you're trying to do with this, this will break a lot of the surface tension. So when you go to apply your glue, it doesn't just beat up. It'll actually absorb. Um, the other thing I also use, just a, a small brush, and then this will be just for uh, like cleaning up areas that I don't want stuff. Need a couple little uh, droppers. Um, and this is actually my homemade static uh, applicator, but you want a strainer for when you uh, put the material out over the, uh, the areas, because it'll get it out evenly and uh, you'll see in the video how that works. And it also sifts it too, so you don't get uh, the real fine base will get to the bottom, and then you can put some of the, uh, the coarser stuff on the top. Um, and then one of the last things I use, paper towels. So if you're gonna try and make a road or any sort of division of uh, materials, you just lay this down on top and then sprinkle, and then you can lift off and then that will usually give you a pretty straight line to represent, say, a road, uh, a pad where it's a different type material, like, say, gravel or so on. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. Just gonna go ahead and tape up all this stuff here. These are my bases for the uh, buildings.
it's not a bad idea to cover the track while you're at it. reason to how to apply any of this stuff so right now I'm just starting with the uh, the low desert soil which is this color just get your sifter and you just kind of and see how it just puts an even layer down and then this thing actually gets all the core stuff and separates it. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just take the core stuff, just set it aside. So now I'm just going to come in with this color. Same sort of thing, you just kind of start mixing it all together. You can actually come back because these buildings actually sit a little further out from uh, where this is because this is only the centerpiece. Can always come back later and scrape that. And then this area here, I wanted to make sort of a quasi gravel road. Just kind of do this right in front of all the buildings. Just take something round or whatever you have and because you're trying to represent a road because if you try and do this when it's wet it will stick to everything so you're just trying to smooth out all the kind of the big lumps the strainer gets it pretty good but this works pretty good and then once you wet it with the uh, With the alcohol, you're going to have to go back and redo a lot of stuff anyway, so you'll start to see a lot of thin spots and The nice thing about this method is it doesn't have to be perfect because you're constantly going to be going back over and redoing little spots here and there. So now take your uh, alcohol water mix. And just give everything a good soaking. And just be careful with the the water alcohol mix because if you have anything painted with uh, 
acrylic paint or a dull coat on it, it actually will react. Found that one out the hard way. Or even stuff that you don't want to get wet that may get uh, warped. And if you get little spots that come up, like right here, I don't know if that shows or not, it's not a big deal. You just come back with uh, more material and fill in. Because this is kind of, I think they call it the, the wet method, where you pretty much just get everything absolutely soaking and then do it all at once and then let it dry. see because of the alcohol water mix everything just kind of it breaks the surface tension and just gets absorbed it's just like ballasting And because of the alcohol, it will dry out rather quickly. Alright, so I got the first coating on. What we're gonna do is you'll see like a little light spot section up. That's gonna come back in. A little more on top of it. This is where you like start mixing the colors up. And we'll start going through just putting layers on top of layers. Here's my other color. Just throw a little bit of this in. It's slightly lighter. And the colors will actually change too after they dry. So what you see initially is not quite what it's gonna end up looking like. And also come in with some uh, just random rocks and you just kind of throw these ones out. show yet but it's a woodland scenics foam I don't know exactly what color this is but when you just throw a little bit on there it really looks good gives a good contrast in the color And then 
around your rocks you just kind of want to put a little extra dirt especially the bigger ones and then come again with some more glue you can tell kind of the areas that need it um, they'll just have a dry look to them and you just want to soak everything real good as you find little stuff that needs to be filled you can just come in and fill it by hand and then when the house or the buildings are back in, we can put them in and then you can build little berms up to them. So you won't get a, a real separation. It'll kind of just blend it in. Same with trees and everything else. You can always come back and add more stuff in later. So for now, I think we'll, uh, I'll stop recording here. And what you want to do is you just let this dry at least a day. You can come back in, do it. And I'll just go ahead and I'll fill the rest of this in. I'll probably use some of the yard uh, mix. It's uh, like a blackish color because the uh, narrow gates are usually did that in some of their bigger yards or just the sidings. Um, after that, I'll go ahead and once this is dry, I'll uh, we'll come back and do all the, the grass and the scenery and that kind of stuff and then do the ballasting to finish it off. So 